Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I have a previous video I showed how to use the Microsoft Flow mobile app. And so today I want to uh, demonstrate how you can use Microsoft Flow with Business Central. So to go to Flow, you can go to flow.microsoft.com and once the page is loaded, then you have you can go to the templates. Then you have Microsoft provide hundreds of services available on, uh, as a template you can connect to. So if you want to create a flow which connect to Business Central, you can just search on the top saying like Business Central. Then there will be a bunch of over 10. So, uh, so actually there's uh, 11 flows available for Business Central. So we're going to take the first one as example. So we want to create a workflow in Business Central. So when somebody send a request for the purchase order approval, then the approver can approve or reject the approval request and then provide some comments for the reason to uh, approve or reject. And then the person who sent the request will receive an email notification and telling them if their request has, has been approved or not. Okay, so let's show this process. So to start from scratch, then you can go to create and then you can say new flow. Okay, so to create that, you can create from a template. You can start from a template, right? So then we can say uh, purchase business central. When you search business central, then you will see that flow comes that flow comes out again, this template. Then you can click on this. Actually, I already have something created for this flow. So I'm going to just show you after you uh, click on create with that template, then you will have something show up here under my flows. So I'm just going to edit this flow Then you can see how this flow has been configured. Okay, so let's click on edit again. So the first screen shows you the your login user and all the connections required to make this flow. So uh, this is the this is all the steps of the flow. The first step is like when a purchase document approval is requested, then you have to select the environment. And so what you have to fill in here, so the production environment is uh, by default is selected here. So this is your business central production environment. And then uh, you can you have to specify which company you want to connect to. So uh, I'm going to connect to the Cronus Canada demo company. Now you don't need to change anything here if like uh, you do not have a specific amount required in order to uh, required for this approval. Like if it's uh, over 1000, then you send this approval request. If the amount is less 1000, then you do not send this purchase order approval request. So you can specify that amount here. Yeah, but so right now we are just saying like for any purchase order, then you have to get approval. So then we just leave it like this. Any uh, so all the amount like greater than zero. That means any amount. So in in so to use this default template in the first step, you only need to specify the company you want to connect to. And let's look at the second step. So for the second step, also you only need to specify the company you're gonna connect to. And then for the third step start an approval. So in this step, you have to specify assign to which user. So let's say it always assigned to me. And then um, let's show the computer. So on the third step, you don't need to change anything else. You just need to specify like it's always assigned. It's assigned to someone and you have to enter that person's Office 365 or Dynamic 365 login email address. Okay, and uh, the fourth step is the condition. So for the condition, it's saying like, uh, if the approval is it's approved, if the response is approved, then uh, what actions you need to take. So you also have to specify the company you're gonna connect to. And for the condition two, then uh, condition two is you have to send an email, okay? Send an email to who? 
to the person who requested this, who sent the request. So you just say to request it by, by somebody, okay? And you can add additional email. So for example, if you want somebody else, always be CC'd or always be emailed for this notification, then you can add that person's email address. Okay, so for yes, then you configure that. If and then if no, if it's not approved, okay, if it's not approved, if response is equal to approve is no, if it's not approved, then you have to add your condition here. So you have to specify the company and then you have to specify who do you want to send the email notification to. So the same thing, you want to send the email notification to the person who requested this. And also you can add a, an additional people you want them to receive the email notification if it's rejected. Okay, so this is the steps you want to configure for your Microsoft Flow. So after that, after you configure the flow, then you can click on Flow Checker. So this will tell you if there's any errors by running this flow or if there's any warnings, okay? And after you do that, then you can test. You can do a test. For example, like um, you could say, I, I will perform the trigger action or you want to, if the previous, uh, if the previous approval request was filled, the flow was filled, then you can say you still want to, you change something, you still want to use the previous, the data from previous run, okay? So you can test the flow from here. So I'll perform the trigger. So then I can go to my Business Central. Once you configure that flow, you go back to your Business Central, then you go to flows. Then you will see, uh, you will have a purchase document approval so this name is different than the out-of-box Business Central uh, workflow. The reason I'm not using this out-of-box, uh, the reason I'm not using this out-of-box purchase order approval workflow is because you cannot specify multiple recipients uh, for the email notification from this out-of-box workflow. And um, and now the other reason I don't want to use the out of box workflow approval workflow is like when the approval request get approved, the requester does not receive an email notification. Only when it gets rejected, then the re uh, the requester will receive an email no notification with the reason it gets it gets requested. So that's a, that that is the out of box workflow purchase order approval workflow. So uh, that's why I would like to use the Microsoft Flow with Business Central because no matter it got approved or rejected, then uh, the requester will receive the email notification to tell to tell them if it's good to go or if it's rejected with a reason. Okay, so once it's configured in Microsoft Flow and uh, you will see the purchase document approval workflow is generated in your Business Central and it's automatically enabled. And uh, except for that, after you configure the Microsoft Flow, you have to configure your approval user setup as well. So even you use Microsoft Flow, you have to still configure this. And uh, you have to, because uh, we are only talking about the purchase order approval, so then you have to uh, configure the hierarchy like uh, if this person, for example, uh, I want to use myself, I will be the person uh, who requests the purchase order approval. And then uh, another user called Jacinth D, she will be my approver. So you could see my approval ID is Jacinth D. And uh, for myself, I do not have any amount for myself to approve. Like for any amount, I have to send the approval request. And for my approver, Jacinth, then you will see she has the unlimited purchase order approve, purchase amount approval. And also, she, if it's a for a sales order, then she has unlimited sales uh, amount approval. So I configured both user to be my email address and I configured my approver to be the approval admin, okay? So the reason I have to use my email address for both is because I don't have my colleagues uh, Dynamic 365 Business Central login. So I have to use my uh, login to trigger the approval request. Then once uh, I put her uh, my email as hers, 
So uh, when I trigger this, then I will receive an email in my email box saying like, um, Jesse W has requested a purchase order approval. And uh, after I approve from, my, so actually this, this email will represent Jason's email at a time. So after Jason's approved from my mailbox, then or rejected from my mailbox, I will receive an email notification to tell me if my purchase order approval request has been approved or not. Okay, so th that's the setup. But uh, in the real case scenario, you will not put the email address for uh, the, sa the same email address for two different users, right? You have to use their actual email address. So this is just for demo purpose and because I don't have the Business Central login from my colleagues, another Business Central login. So that's, that's the way I have to set it up in order to uh, receive the email notifications. Okay, so uh, now let's start the purchase order uh, approval process. So let's go to the purchase orders and then um, I've, I need to find an existing purchase order which is open and has a mount, this one. Okay, so this purchase order is open and uh, has the amount on it. And so then for this one, I can send a purchase order approval request. I'm go gonna send one, send approval request. Okay, so after I send this, uh, it, m it might take a minute. So then you will receive a email notification in my email mailbox and saying like you have an order. So I, I have tested previously, so I received something like this. So this is the new one just come in and you see it says there's a pending approval request and for this purchase order 108035. So this is the order we are working on. That's the order we send the approval request and it's totaling for this amount and for this company needs to be approved. So that's pr first just test the approved process. So let's say uh, I'm just in, I log into my mailbox, and I found this approval request and I, I tell the requester, oh, okay, it's good to go. And then I put my com uh, comments here and I click on submit. So after I approved, then Jesse W will receive, the original requester will receive an email notification in her mailbox and telling her like this purchase order uh, because I'm using my email, so that's why you see here. Actually, it should say Jacinth has approved purchase, purchase order, this purchase order, and this is the total amount for this company. And her comment is good to go, okay? So that this for the approval approved scenario. And uh, for the rejected scenario, let's find another purchase order. Okay, let's refresh this one. So after, after it got approved, you can see after I press F5 to re uh, refresh this page, then the status changed from pending approval to released, okay? So now let's go to another purchase order, find another purchase order so we can uh, send, let's just use this, use this one, okay? So it's open, but it doesn't have any amount. Let's add an item to this then so we can send approval request. So on the purchase line, um, so let's add a item which has a sales price. So that's using 103. Okay, so it's reminding you for the work day, that's fine. Okay, so now we got an amount on this purchase order. So f remember for any amount I will request approval. And uh, any amount greater than zero, that's why zero will not work. So uh, send approval request. After you send approval request, pay attention to this. So the status will change from open to pending approval. And then you will receive. So I'm simulating like uh, I'm the person who sent a request. And then Jacinth will receive an email notification in her mailbox and telling her this purchase order request approval. So this time I'm gonna reject. Um, the order amount is too low. Submit it. And then, so this is the uh, Jacinth uh, give you a reply and she rejected the order, uh, the approval request. Then you will receive, Jesse, 
Jesse Wang. So actually, she should say Jessence because we configure approval user with the same email. So it's saying Jesse. So actually, we'll say Jessence has rejected purchase order with this total amount for this company, and the comment is the order amount is too low. Okay. So this is for the rejected uh, scenario. Okay. So then we tested both scenario. And uh, you could say you could see if I refresh this uh, order, if I click on F5 to refresh this order, it's still open because this didn't get approved. It, this do a purchase order and send approval request again, and so that's the process. And if you go to navigate, so if you go to request approval and see my flows, this is like uh, how you can see the status of your flow. So you can check that in Business Central, I mean. So you can go to My Flows, and then you can click on that uh, Purchase Order Approval Workflow. Then uh, you will see if it's running successfully previously or it's failed. Then you can see how many, how many runs you have with that flow. Okay. Okay, so now you see this flow loaded then you can take a look how many runs has been succeeded. Okay, so there's uh, all these runs has been succeeded. And if you have anything failed, you will see the status as well. Okay, and if you click on process, then you can see a history of the flow. You see the flow entries, then you can see the history of the flows. So the reason like you don't see those re recent flows, so today is October the 7th, and you only see something until 4, 13 p.m. this afternoon. The reason is like, um, I need to be the approver to see this in my view, okay? But because right now I'm only the requester. So in the afternoon, I did test with my another colleague. At that time, I set it up myself as the approver and she's sending me the approval request. So that's why I can see uh, what she sent it to me and the status, but so, I need to be the approver to see the entries, but because right now we changed the approval user setup, so I'm not the approver, I'm the requester, so that's why we don't see the status of those purchase orders like we sent in this evening. Okay, so I think that's everything I want to share today. Thank you so much for joining the session today, and I hope to see you guys again next time.